We're actually revisiting a set that released last summer called Vivid Portrayals, also known as Thick, Heavy, and Color. There's many different names for this, but we're going to call it those. This is set B. Um, if you guys don't recall, I actually opened the set before, but set A. That's the one with the Gigantamax shiny Charizard. We're going to give Eternatus some love because I feel like this version of that release just got ignored entirely, although there's some really good um, cards that you can actually pull. I'm actually chasing after the Nessa and other um, shiny Pokemon. Yes, there are shiny Pokemon in this set too, not just set A. And we're gonna be talking more in depth about this because, you know, like as with any simplified Chinese set, it's a big mishmash of different, you know, Japanese and also English sets because right now, mainland China is trying to catch up with Japan. Again, not Taiwan, not Hong Kong. This set will have, you know, four different sets as you can see in the top right corner, set B. And I'm excited to see what is gonna be, you know, in this box. So. One thing that is guaranteed, definitely the SR. Other cards that you can also pull. There's at least one baby shiny, sorry, one baby shiny. Sometimes you can get two if you're lucky. And there's also one amazing rare. So yes, if, if you remember this from Vivid Voltage, you're gonna see amazing rare cards. There's, I think, three in this set, and then there's three in set A. Rayquaza, unfortunately, is not in this set, but there's other beautiful, amazing rares that we can pull. And the favorite baby shiny, or the chase baby shiny that I'm after, is actually Suicune. That was one of the better baby shinies from Shiny Star V, or Shining Fates, as you may recall. And as you can see too, of course, Eternatus is on here. If you guys want to know the Chinese name of Eternatus, it's Wuji Taina. So um, that's obviously from Darkness Ablaze. There's also cards from Champion's Path, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, of course, some of those cards actually re release in Japanese in Infinity Zone and also other sets too. But unfortunately, they were just grouped into Champion's Path. There's obviously cards from Shining Fates. Not the Shiny Charizard that's going to be in set A. Again, this is just a whole like pick and mix of sets, as, we, as I like to call it. Um, you know, a little assortment. So you're going to see some cards. Obviously, there's no Rainbow Charizard that already released as a promo from a gift box. And the Shiny Charizard V is from set A. And look at that. We just pulled our first Amazing Rare. Also, it's only one per box. Um, again, printed in Japan. So you're going to have that lovely Japanese card quality. So Zashian, very nice. From Legendary Heartbeat, originally in Japanese, but of course, Vivid Voltage with the yellow borders <laughs> in English. So yes, that's a very nice Amazing Rare to pull. And of course, to commemorate Mugen Daina, I have my or Japanese name of Eternatus. I have my lovely Eternatus sleeves. Actually, this is the original artwork of Infinity Zone. One of the main sets that really got me interested in the Sword and Shield era, actually, and also to play Sword and Shield. Eternatus is actually a really cool Pokemon. I feel like it's really overlooked. And actually, a lot of people in Japan like happen to like Eternatus, ironically enough. Not so much in the States, but it's okay. I just think Eternatus is just one of those freaky looking Pokemon that really make the story interesting. And also here's Suikun. So yes, we have the lovely holographic. This is originally from Darkness of Blaze and Infinity Zone. Sui Jun is the uh, Chinese name of Sui Kun, the Mandarin Chinese name. So if you want to learn some new names of Pokemon, there you go. I like to throw in some cool names here and there, especially my favorite Pokemon. But yes, like I said, Nessa is pullable from this set. That's one big reason why I want to open this for fun, to explore, and also give this set some love. Because again, I like to give the um, overlooked sets from Simplified Chinese. We have Diane C.O. from Legendary Heartbeat. And Nessa, she, there she is right there. <laughs> Rurina in Japanese, if you guys also d didn't know, she has other names as well. Yeah, Chung in Korean, lots of names for her. But let's keep going. I'm curious to see. I'm not gonna, you know, have any pressure on me because we know the SR is guaranteed. Um, thankfully, so this is also the old format of Japanese booster boxes, of course, you know, um, in simplified Chinese, printed in Japan, but for some reason, after Primordial Martial Arts, they changed the format. Um, and we have here Simipur and Crobat. Ironically, okay, we gotta talk about Crobat. Obviously, this is from Darkness Ablaze, Infinity Zone in Japanese. Um, interestingly enough, we also have the shiny Crobats in the set. Um, there's the VMAX, the V. Ironically, though, the V did not release in the, you know, the shiny V did not release in a set before. Um, it would be either a promo from the shiny Crobat box in Japanese or the um, shiny Crobat Shining Fates, um, what's it called, collection box with the, both the V and the VMAX. So this is like one of the first few times I've actually seen the shiny Crobat V release in a set, like where you can actually pull it. Very interesting. In traditional Chinese, it also came from a gift box. I believe it was from one of the Lunar New Year gift boxes featuring um, Urshifu and whatnot. So that's really interesting. Um, so again, unique release for the Shadi Crobat V. 
So if you can actually pull that, that'd be pretty cool. If you're not guaranteed a, a full art shiny, you are guaranteed a full art of some sort. It could be shiny, it could not be shiny, but you're definitely guaranteed at least one or two baby shinies. So we're gonna go through this. BSO guys, as you can see too, slim packs, five cards per pack. We have 30 packs in a box. We would consider this the slim packs at this point. There is a jumbo version of this too, where you have the 25 cards in a pack. And yes, this is during the time where we had the jumbo booster boxes. I believe there's 24 packs, but they're very expensive. Um, I have not opened that yet. I probably will one day, but yes, they're no longer around um, unless like certain sets are still in print within mainland China. But as of now, we've moved on to the six pack, um, six jumbo pack booster boxes. The ones with the shrink wrap with the Pokeballs in them, if you guys have seen my recent simplified Chinese uh, Pokemon openings. But that's also another reason why I wanted to revisit older sets so you guys can see a direct comparison um, of how the older simplified Chinese booster boxes used to be versus like Nine Colors Gathering or Primordial Martial Arts, the sets that people are paying more attention to, interestingly enough. I'm not surprised Eevee Heroes was very big and also Blastoise and Venusaur are part of the big three, the big um, OG starters, so I totally understand. But we're also going to give some of the older sets some love because I think they deserve it too. Especially if you love baby shinies, amazing rares, and you know, you don't remember where they came from. At least in mainline China, this is how they release. We have Al Creamy V Max, if you don't recall, Champion's Path in English, but Legendary Heartbeat in Japanese. So, which Legendary Heartbeat was partially Vivid Voltage, but this just got shafted into <laughs> Champion's Path. And guys, you, you might be asking too, like, how the hell? Do I know what card is in what set? I know I sound like an encyclopedia, but during that time period, I cannot tell you how many packs of Champion's Path I've opened, how many I've just like torn apart looking for that, you know, Rainbow Charizard, Shiny Charizard V. I got so sick of Champion's Path. And no, I know I eventually pulled the Shiny Charizard V, but I just got so, so sick of it. I just quit opening <laughs> English packs regularly on YouTube and even in real life. I just open it once in a while. And we have our first baby Shiny Dracovish. I remember Ash had one of this in his party. So very interesting to see that. Not the sweet Kun, unfortunately. I saw the blue and I got excited, but it's okay. So that's one baby shiny. If we're lucky, maybe we can pull another one. I believe shiny Rotom is also in the set. So it's going to be either water, electric, psychic, or dark. So that's those are your you know, type choices. If you're looking for a fire baby shiny, it's not going to be in the set. I'm so sorry. You might want to look in set A because that's going to have the shiny Charizard V Max and shiny Charizard V. Obviously, you have your fire types there. So let's keep going here, Tornadus. But yeah, so that's basically, you know, and I've opened this set a lot too, Infinity Zone and Darkness Ablaze. It just, when you open a set so many times, this, the card list just becomes burned into your brain and you just, you know, experience is why I've become sort of an encyclopedia of the <laughs> Sword and Shield era. It is what it is. But, you know, I love I loved this era very much. And this is literally a walk down memory lane. You know, when I first started YouTube, my first Japanese set to open was actually Infinity Zone, the one featuring Eternatus. And, you know, this is also interesting, too, because Eternatus here is its regular form. On Infinity Zone, you see Eternatus in its Eternamax form. You must be wondering if this is the same Pokemon if you haven't played Sword and Shield. Yes, it is. This is just like the super powered form of Eternatus. OP. I think it's even one of the biggest Pokemon in terms of size. <laughs> so keep that in mind about Eternatus. It's a very interesting Pokemon. But yes, so walk down memory lane. And also, oh, here's Alec. Alakaz MV, before I move on to the other topic, Alakaz MV deserves some um, discussion because obviously this came from Astonishing Volt Tackle in Japanese, but this was released in a collection box in English with a jumbo card. So that's, you know, interesting, unique release there. Another unique V card that actually you can pull from this set is the Pin Curtain V. I think that was in Rebel Clash in English, but in Japanese it came out as a promo. It, it wasn't part of any particular set. So a very interesting card to also pull. Another reason why these, you know, Asian language mega sets are also very interesting. They just throw in, you know, random cards that might have been like maybe gym promos in Japan and may not have released in a particular set, but you can just pull it randomly in a different language in a main set. So very interesting. And no, this is not a subset, as you can see. CS2BC, so when you don't have the 0.5, it's just a main set. And obviously the artwork is actually nice. It's There's some effort put in there. When, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can watch my previous video. Um, with the glaring mold trace on it it just the pack and box art look very half-assed in terms of graphics um that's called raging flame scorch in the sky if you guys don't know but yeah so interesting releases in mainland china again they're just trying to catch up as fast as possible with japan or are they really because they are taking quite a while but at the same time too the releases are very interesting so that's why i like opening them and explaining them to you guys and you can also see your cards your favorite cards from previous sets and still no secret rare yet, it's okay, we are guaranteed again. This is printed in Japan, this is formatted like your usual Japanese booster box. 
boxes, 30 card, 30 packs per box, five cards per pack. They're considered your slim packs in mainland China. We have our slim packs versus our jumbo packs with the 25 cards per pack. And we have our M for Rose V from Legendary Heartbeat or Vivid Voltage. Oh my goodness, I've opened these sets too many times. <laughs> That's how bad it was, guys, yes. Vivid Voltage was also very fun because, you know, Legendary Heartbeat brought out the amazing rares. Legendary Par Heartbeat was half or part of Vivid Voltage. And of course, we had the Gigantamax Pikachu. Not in this set, by the way. There was a separate simplified Chinese set um, featuring Gigantamax Pikachu, Giant um, Max Battle, or something like that. There was a Pikachu set versus a Cinderace set. So you'll notice a lot of the, the main sets in mainland China have like two dual releases, just like this and the Shiny Charizard VMAX set, vi Vivid Portrayals. And regular Dracovish, non hollow version, but sorry, non shiny version, but it is the hollow card. <laughs> don't, get mixed, don't get mixed up between the hollows and the shiny. Let's keep going though, we still have a secret rare to pull. We might pull another baby shiny if we're lucky. I have seen people pull um, more than one from one booster box, but usually you max out at two, unfortunately. I believe, you know, because you already have an amazing rare. That's like three little bonuses aside from the secret rare, which is very nice actually, because during the Sword and Shield era, not every set had art rares like we do in the Scarlet and Violet era. We are so spoiled in the Scarlet and Violet era because it makes opening older Sword and Shield sets, at least in Korean or maybe even Japanese, very boring compared to what we have now. Oh, look, we got very lucky. And ironically, we pulled, pull, we pulled two fossil Pokemon. <laughs> we have Arctazol, uh, baby shiny. So it's very pale compared to its non-shiny counterpart. Very interesting. So interesting, Dra Draco, um, Vish, and Arctazol. Oh my gosh, this, the fossil Pokemon are very confusing in uh, Scarlet and Violet era. It's like playing puzzles. You're putting two pieces of animals that do, do not go together. Like the whole purpose of it was just to make a Pokemon that just looks really wonky. You know, nothing's worse than um, Arctovish. It's literally just a fish with a backwards head. That's the worst one. <laughs> All right, guys. So it's okay. We still um, have yet to pull our secret rare. No um, Suicune, but it's okay. We can always find that maybe in the future. Um, but yeah, still chasing after the Nessa if I'm lucky enough to pull her. But you know, when I'm when I'm consciously trying to pull something, it never happens. It, it is what it is. Oh, look at that! See, we have our regular non-shiny Arctivish, much more saturated, and much more colorful and vibrant versus the baby shiny version. All right, guys, we still have a handful of packs. Again, these are slim packs. They're very you know pancake-like, very slim versus the chunky boy um, jumbo packs with the 25 cards. All right, let's keep going. We have Whimsicott, we have Squovet, and we have Hollow Hoop. Oh, wow. I remember this, this being a promo from one of those, like, you know, promo packs when you pre-order booster boxes of Infinity Zone. We had that in Korean and Japanese. So that's the non-promo version. It's the regular, you know, pullable Hollow Hoop. All right, guys, let's keep going. We still have some, you know, a secret rare to pull. It's also interesting, too, because of the way. Oh, very nice. Wuji Taina. The Chinese name of Eternatus. Very nice VMAX. And you know, if you guys didn't know, the reason why Gigantamax or Dynamax Pokemon exist is because of Eternatus, because of its, you know, pow insane power. But it's this is like the ultimate form of Eternatus, the hand form, as I like to call it. It's massive. But yes, I was getting into the topic of um, it's interesting because the way that mainland China released this set, Vivid Portrayals, it's like a spitting image, just a little vari variation of infinite power. If you guys don't remember that in traditional Chinese, we had the Eternamax Eternatus on the pack for set A, I believe, and set B had the non-shiny Gigantamax Charizard. So that was very interesting. Whereas in mainland China, we have the Gigantama sorry, Gigantamax Shiny Charizard. It's a mouthful. But yeah, so it's very interesting. Oh, that's the card. I okay, you know what? It's cute. It's a <laughs> simplified Chinese alchemy. Very cute. Originally, I believe, from um, Shining Fates, not Champion's Path. We had the regular Alchemy V and V Max and Champion's Path. But in Shining Fates, we had the Secret or the full art versions of Alchemy. So very interesting split in the English releases. So there you go. Guaranteed SR. You guys saw it there. Alchemy is actually very cute. If you watch Pokemon Horizons, it, it makes a lot of desserts with one of the characters. So it's very cute. I've actually grown to love Alchemy over time. And its Gigantamax form looks really cool as the birthday cake. All right. So we have Waylord. I don't think we're really going to pull much else from this up, but we're going to keep going so you guys can see all the packs. Fun to visit, though. You know, I haven't pulled any of my cases, but I at least pulled an Eternatus. Wuji Taina, so I cannot complain. It's definitely something. One of the, you know, definitely a mascot of the pack. All right, guys, so enough of me blabbering about Eternatus. Let's finish this set. We have Chat, <laughs> Reverse Hollow Relicant, of course, to the unique reverse hollow pattern of 
mainland China of simplified Chinese cards. And we have our last pack here, guys. This is really fun, though. I'll try to re revisit more um, slept on <laughs> simplified Chinese sets. If you guys enjoy it, please comment below if you guys like me bab blabbering about older sets. All right, we have Tynamo, Reverse Hollow, and Whimsicott. All right, guys, very Pokemon. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to support the channel, be sure to check out my web store, crystalcollects.com. I sell a wide variety of packs, including this set, too. If you want your own booster box or packs, check out crystalcollects.com. I have my trainer card there as well, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe, everyone.